everybody, it's Crystal Ann Compton. How are you doing today? I hope you are having a beautiful day wherever you are on the planet today. In this video, I'm going to be answering one of my subscribers' questions. And in fact, it has to do with mediumship, which is fabulous because in case you didn't know, on September 9th, we are launching the 2019 Mediumship Intensive. And when I say we, what I mean specifically is myself and my best friend on the planet besides my husband and of course all my dogs, Trisha Carr. She's a fabulous channel and teacher. You probably know her from Trisha Carr, Charmed Life, a very popular and wonderful podcast. If you don't know, you better know. Anyway, we are starting this six-week program, the week of September 9th, and we're going to be teaching everybody about multidimensional mediumship. What does multidimensional mean? It means that it's not just about talking to dead people or talking to the other side or even perceiving into the world of the other side. It's about rendezvousing with multi-dimensional beings, beings like ascended masters and even saints, historic figures, also angels and higher vibrational interdimensional beings. That's all part of mediumship. And let me tell you something, everybody. Mediumship is absolutely natural. It's also, not for nothing, found in the Bible. Did you know that Jesus was a medium? Jesus was a medium. Don't you remember the transfiguration when he went out and he turned into this brilliant white color and he had an encounter with two spirits, these spirits of long dead men, Moses and Elijah. He spoke to them. He communicated with them. Jesus had a mediumship experience and Jesus also said, greater things than I have done will you do. And I've talked to a lot of skeptics or Christian uh, apologists who say, well, that's just Jesus, and it just J Jesus gets to do that because he's the Son of God. Well, no, we are also children of God. When Jesus taught us the Lord's Prayer, he said, our Father who art in heaven, not my Father, and you bastard children, you wait over there. He said, our Father, we're all the sons and daughters of God. And if Jesus could do it, we can do it. So there's nothing to fear. In fact, mediumship is just expanded perception. And we should all want that. We should all want to intimately connect to the world of spirit. So if you don't know, you better know. Drop down into the description. There's a link for you to check out the program. It starts soon. It's going to be great. We already have a fantastic, mobilized, dynamic group of students, but there is always room for more. All right. Without further ado, let's get into today's question. This comes from Julia Wesley. Hi, Julia. How are you doing? And she asks me, or she says, I've heard mediums aren't supposed to communicate with 4D spirits. Can you tell me your take on that? Well, first of all, let me explain what a 4D spirit is. We exist, obviously, in 3D, third dimensional reality, the Earth plane. But this dimension is just one of many that is fixed to our universal structure. And this universe can can also be and is a multiverse. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of dimensional spaces in this house in which we live. And I like to call the universe of our experience a house. And Christ even said, in my father's house are many mansions. In this universe, there are many spaces and places that we can dwell. And one of those dimensions is the fourth dimension. Now, the fourth dimension is interesting because it's actually a portal dimension. It is a dimension that we pass through on our way to other dimensions. For example, fifth dimension, which is Christ consciousness, Buddha consciousness. This is probably that first tier of heaven, as we call it. And also we go through 4D in order to jettison up to 60, 70, and beyond. And not for nothing, these other beings that exist in these dimensions and also beings that exist outside of this house I won't, I'm not going to get too crazy because if I start talking about parallel dimensions and stuff, we'll never get out of here. But other higher, lower, <laughs> adjacent dimensional beings also use the fourth dimension in order to access us here in 3D. Think of that train station in Harry Potter when they're on their way to Hogwarts. You just got a lot of trains coming. You got a lot of people moving. You got a lot of things happening that's what fourth dimensional reality is. Now, when we as humans die, we go 
immediately into the fourth dimension. And when we see the light, that's actually the portal that's opening up in the fourth dimension. Most of us actually go into that light and after doing so, we teleport into another dimension, whatever that dimension is for us. I mean, it's going to be different for different people, but that's all happening in fourth dimensional reality. However, not everybody goes into the light. Some people are too disoriented to go into the light. Maybe they suffered a catastrophic death, for example, and they don't know what's happening and they're just kind of wandering around. In fact, some people who had dementia, Alzheimer's, or who were heavy, heavy drug addicts, so much so that they were altered for a large portion of their life, sometimes when they die, they pop into fourth dimensional reality and they stay in that disoriented mind space until such time as a guide or a keeper comes and lets them know, hey, this is where you are, this is where we want to go. But there are a lot of people wandering around disoriented in 4D reality. 4D reality is also where we go every single night when we dream. We actually start in 4D reality. And most of us say, peace out, Hogwarts. I'm going to go to sixth dimensional reality. I'm going to go up to eighth dimensional reality. I'm going to go hang out with my friends or my soul group or with Jesus, or we do other things, but we all start in 4D. Now, there are other reasons that a spirit wouldn't want to cross or to go through the portal into another dimension. And those reasons usually have kind of a negative connotation. For example, there are people who fear retribution. Maybe they lived their lives here on earth in a not so kind or good way, and maybe they hurt people and they don't want to face the punishment that they think they're going to receive. So they just hang out in the fourth dimension, that dimension that's the most proximate and earth-like because they're afraid of what awaits them. Do they need to be afraid? No, they don't actually. They can cross. It's not, it's, I don't believe in hell. That's a whole nother video. I've already done it probably five times, but they don't need to be afraid. Nonetheless, they are. And a lot of times when we have really religious people or people who have hellfire and brimstone or dogma just entrenched in their psyche and in their being, they may think that they're going to go to purgatory or they're going to go to hell and they would rather hang out in fourth dimensional reality. This is something that's possible. And the other kind of person who doesn't really want to cross over or get into that portal and teleport to the fifth dimension is somebody who just likes to be around the energy of earth. And in particular, they like the more base energies, the energy of drugs, the energy of alcohol, the, the energy of lust, the energy even of murder and mischief. They tend to be somewhat malevolent earthbound spirits, but don't get it twisted. These are just people who are dead. And just as you meet people on the street every single day that are good, bad, and indifferent, you're going to find those types of people on the other side as well. These type of malevolent spirits, by the way, are usually the ones that come through Ouija boards or through divination sessions. If we're not doing it correctly, we don't have the right intention. They like to come through and start messing with us. They may start as saying, I'm an angel or I'm your departed loved one. But over time, they start changing their colors. They try to dominate or they just try to scare us. People tend to think that these beings are demons coming through Ouija boards. No, no, usually not. Usually it's just some jerk face in fourth dimensional reality who's trying to scare us because he loves the energy of that. So you have all those types of beings hanging out in 4D and that doesn't speak to all the other beings from other dimensions and other parallel spaces. This is just the humans that are there. But one thing we have to keep in mind is that they really shouldn't be there. They really should cross over. They should go into the light and they should teleport to whatever dimension is appropriate for them. They shouldn't be stuck in the fourth dimensional reality. And so your question again, a long way around is, I've heard mediums aren't supposed to communicate with 4D spirits. Can you tell me what, my, what your take is on it? Absolutely. Mediums speak to fourth dimensional spirits all the time.
Mediums speak with earthbound spirits all the time. Some mediums have entire ministries just around that. And what they're trying to do is get the disoriented folks or get the people who are fearful to understand that they have nothing to be afraid of or to understand that this is the process, that this is what they need to do to cross into the light. This is called soul rescue. In fact, there are some mediums that can only talk to fourth dimensional beings. And once they cross, they lose the connection. So they spend all their time working with what we would call ghosts. And so I don't have a problem fundamentally with speaking to spirits in the fourth dimension. However, here's my caveat. It's probably, unless you're doing soul rescue, unless, you're do, unless it's a ministry trying to help these beings to understand, it's probably a waste of your time because you're going to knock up against one of those malevolent earthbounds. You're going to knock up against those people who are just fearful or who are stubborn or who want to stay connected to a place or a space or a person or a thing. And it can be just a waste of your time. Here again, they're just people who are dead. And just like you meet somebody who's really intelligent and really wonderful and you want to spend time with them, you also in your life meet people who are an energy sink or they're mean or you wouldn't trust them with your time, much less your family members or your animals or your space. Those people exist here on the planet and they exist over there as well. Why would you want to talk to those kinds of people? Why would you want to spend time with those kinds of people? What are you getting out of it? The only thing you're really getting is a validation that there is more to this life than what we experience in 3D reality because now we have proof that there is an earthbound spirit and we're communicating with them. So, don't most of us already have the fundamental belief that there's more to life than this? In fact, within us all, right within our heart, we have that knowing that there is source energy, there is divine energy, there is an infrastructure, a universal spiritual infrastructure far more vast than what we can see with our human eyes. We already know this. So why would we spend our time talking to these types of beings unless we're specifically trying to help them? Listen, mediumship comes in all shapes and sizes and that's just the reality of it. And again, mediumship is completely natural. It's about what you want to do with your energy. It's about what you want to do with your time. And if what you want to do is hang out in 4D and experience that, well, then go have a good time. Me, I'd rather be hanging out with angels. I'd rather be hanging out with Arcturians. I'd rather be hanging out with the I am that I am. That's where I want to be. But that's me and everybody's different. So I hope I have answered your question. It's a great question. Thanks for letting me explain 4D reality again. And just to remind you, September 9th is the week we begin, the 2019 Mediumship Intensive. And again, we have a lot of students, but there's always room for you. So I hope to see you in that program. And until next time, I love you wherever you are. In fact, I got nothing but love for you. Bye.